Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to DeVos Fieldhouse here in Holland, Michigan, February 6, 2016, a Saturday. My partner, first time with him, Blaine W. Please tell the audience how you pronounce <laughs> the last name. It's Blaine Weirs Bicky. Weirs Bicky. Most, most people are used to hearing me on the play-by-play, uh, -play, but happy to <laughs> sit back and get, a, get some new perspective as a color man tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> Switching it around a bit. I've done a little bit of play-by-play -play in my time here working with Hope, but... I'm on play-by-play. -play. We'll have Blaine on color for you tonight, or this afternoon, I should say. Yeah. Big day here, Blaine. We have we just had the seniors introduced for the Flying Dutch, Maura McAfee, Autumn Anderson, also Alumni Day. At halftime of this game, we'll have the 2006 National Championship squad. The Flying Dutch will be presented at halftime, and we'll celebrate their 33-1 National Championship season. Yeah, obviously a lot going on for the women's basketball program. As you mentioned, with the national championship team coming by, always huge to see uh, a team with such a huge amount of success come back to Hope and just really uh, show what Hope College is about, and that's about being exceptional in athletics and in a lot of other areas. And uh, the seniors, you know, going to be tough to see a couple great seniors go. Sure. Hunter madison has been a huge impact guard for four years. Obviously also a great softball player, too. Maybe, exactly. maybe some people don't know that. Fantastic on the softball field, and Laura McAfee, two-time All-American, could be a three-time All-American. Just a walking double-double double for exactly. sure. Exactly, <laughs> so that's awesome. And, and Coach Morehouse, even bigger news here, could yes. be going for his 500th win, which is not something a lot of people get to do in college basketball, so obviously potential for a historic day here. And uh, things are stacking up pretty good when we look in the standings for that to happen. Right, right on. You mentioned Coach Brian Morehouse going for 500, just 76 losses. Five, he's going for 576. Unbelievable what he's done in Blaine. I read a note prior to the game that their win, their last win was the 18th consecutive 20-win season for the Flying Dutch. Unbelievable mark there. Yeah. They're facing the St. Mary's Bells today. St. Mary's, tough season so far. We see them at 1-20, mm -hmm. just 1-11 in MIAA play. Got a win earlier in the season in December against Alma. They played Hope on January 6th, got beat by 40 at their home court. So, Blaine, tell us, if you're St. Mary's tonight, you're in the DeVos Fieldhouse facing the number 7 four, four team four, in the country. Yeah. Excuse me. What do you tell them if you're the coach of the Bells tonight? You know, I called the uh, game uh, where Alma came to town here, and Alma's sitting just one spot above St. Mary's in the standings, and I called that game where they came in here, and I said, see the focus, come play your best basketball, and mm -hmm. honestly what I said is, you might not have a great chance of winning here. Nobody does. Sure. The girls do not lose here <laughs> no. almost ever. And I said, what you need to do is at least try and keep the game close into halftime. You need to ha have that mentality where, you know what, we're still in this game. Because I've seen games where Hope will go into a game at halftime close to teams and still win by 30. So, yeah. if, so if you're already out of the game at half, if you're down by double digits or more at half, then you might as well pack your bags and go. Because mm -hmm. you, you, so basically I would say just keep, keep your mentality strong and, and believe that you can be in this game. That's really all you can do because exactly. uh, it's, it's tough to keep up with the, a lot of talent at Hope where they can score outside and inside. Yep, you mentioned point differential there. And on the season, outscoring opponents by nearly 30 points per game through 20 games. I mean, we're talking domination second half, third quarter. They'll come out and attack too. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll have the national anthem here at DeVos and we'll get tip off going shortly after. By singing the national anthem, please welcome Miss Ellen Neifert, along with Darren Dystemars. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's light? Gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rattled, the bombs burst. Does that star 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the DeVos Field House here on the campus of Hope College for this afternoon's women's varsity contest between the Bells of St. Mary's and your Hope College Flying Dutch. Here are this afternoon's starting lineups. First for St. Mary's at one forward, a 5'10 senior from Clayton, Ohio. Number 30, Krista Kanapke. And at one forward for the Flying Dutch, a 5'9 junior from Eaton Rapids, number 23, Elizabeth Perkins. Starting at one forward for the Bells, a six foot senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 40, Eleni Shea. And at one forward for the Flying Dutch, a six foot junior from Winfield, Illinois, number 25, Mandy Traversa. Starting at center for St. Mary's, a six foot junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 42, Kelsey Ronan. And at center for the Flying Dutch, a six foot senior from Midland, number 14, Maura McAfee. At one guard for St. Mary's, a 5'2 senior from North Wales, Pennsylvania, number 12, Maddie Kohler. And at one guard for the Flying Dutch, a 5'9 senior from door number 10, Autumn Anderson. And at the final guard spot for St. Mary's, a 5'5 freshman from Elmhurst, Illinois, number 14, Aaron Maloney. And at the final guard spot for the Flying Dutch, a 5'4 junior from Caledonia, number 24, Angelique Gaddy. St. Mary's is coached by Jen Henley. Hope College is coached by Brian Morehouse. Your officials this afternoon, Mr. Andy McKellar, Mr. Brian Gould, and Mr. All right, Gray. we're back here at DeVos Fieldhouse. Blaine and I were just doing some, some more pregame analysis. Muted, though, but here we are. We're, again, just ready for tip-off here. St. Mary's at Hope. I don't know if you heard me do the starting lineups. Maybe you heard on the broadcast, but I'll go through it. Last name real quick, Flying Dutch, Anderson. McAfee, Perkins, Gaddy, Traversa for the Bells, Kohler, Kanapke. Uh, we got Maloney, Shea, and Ronan. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about all the uh, impact players that Hope has, a lot of players that can score the ball in a lot of different ways. On the other side, sure. just get a look into the Bells. They got a couple of players that average double digits, Elaney, Shea. Um, you've obviously got to watch for the senior at six feet tall. The forward really has the ability to score. Um, not somebody who you're going to see shooting from the outside a lot, trying to work inside. We'll see if she can battle uh, against a Hope team that's got more size than anyone they've probably played all year. And then Krista Knapke averaging about 11 points a game, too. Yep, and Knapke going to take the tip here against McAfee. Goes to the Dutch, so we're off here. Nice look inside. McAfee misses the layup. Good look from Anderson. That was already we saw senior to senior, but unfortunately McAfee cannot complete the play. Going the other way here. Yeah, offensive foul looks like they got. Uh, do they get uh, Kanapke? Yeah. First the, foul early. You don't want to see that. I mean, you're gonna have a tough enough time stopping them on the defensive end. If you're if you're the Bells, you don't want to have offensive fouls to mix in too. Exactly. There's a shot going up, missed by Gaddy. Good offensive rebound by Perkins. She'll bring it back out. Gaddy looking to set up Traversa. Perkins. Anderson right wing. Gaddy to Traversa. Anderson loses it up top, and it's going to be jump ball, and it'll go the Bell's way. Yep. Yeah, aggressive defense right there. A solid job by St. Mary's keeping um, everybody in front of them. They're going to have to do that. The best chance they've got is to, to keep hope from getting the ball inside. I mean, obviously, they've got a lot of size. 
Exactly. Got to bring it on defense tonight. Full aggression, hopefully from the Bells. Driving in here. Kohler got stuck in the on the baseline there, and we're going to go other way, but referees will meet here, and it is going Hope's way yeah. to the disbelief of the Bells. <laughs> Coach Henley not too happy with that call, obviously <laughs> asking for a little more help. Looking for the first points of the game here. Perkins to Anderson, swings at Gaddy left side. See what McAfee can do underneath, and there you see it again, Blaine. Great defense by St. Mary's, but taken right away. Gaddy kind of off balance, just pushes it up. Gets her own board, cleans it up, and there's the first two points of the game. Yeah, not exactly the take that you would expect out of that situation initially. Fortunate enough, maybe she was just going off the glass to herself to get the offensive <laughs> board. Right. The little off balance there as we see one go up and out of there by Shea. We mentioned the leading scorer for the Bells. Keep an eye out on her, number 40 for St. Mary's. Gaddy stripped in the lane. Yeah, they got those active hands. They've poked it away a few times now. A few great defensive stands by the Bells early on here. Two minutes in. Look into Shea. She goes to work out. Excuse me, that's Shea on the miss. Three. We're sticking with the Bells here underneath. 7.56 to play first quarter. Again, we play four 10-minute quarters here for the women's game. A little collision out on the wing. No call. Yep. Referee timeout here. Double injury there. You'd think they'd stop the game with two <laughs> players down. Right. Went to toss it in, and the only person there to catch it was Mar McAfee. And unfortunately, you hope uh, both players are okay here. That's uh, Gaddy uh, for Hope. It looks like it's Kohler uh, in there for uh, St. Mary's. Yeah, Kohler and Gaddy just collide in that inbounds play. Obviously not part of the execution plan there, but it's looking like we're seeing Kohler still on the ground, senior guard from Mount St. Joseph Academy. Look, looked as though, you know, Gaddy, you know, got whacked in the head momentarily, but it looks like she's fine, just kind of shook it off. You hope Kohler's okay, and you wonder, yeah, it looks like she has a little bloody nose or something maybe. Right. <laughs> You just gotta, you never know what it's gonna be in that situation, so. We'll see if there's a substitution here for Kohler early, and it looks like it's going to be. Aspen Davis will check in for the Bells. For 7.54 to play, early first quarter, 2-0, Hope College lead, Dutch with the ball. We've already seen a few great Defensive possessions for the Bells. See if they can continue that. Oh. Traversa for three. Got it. Oh, well, big knockdown three right there. And that's what we've come to expect to make those shots. And I mentioned earlier that she's just the reincarnation of Brittany Berry. As soon as she leaves, yes. Traversa steps into her place. <laughs> Great mention there of Berry, the all time leading three point field goal shooter in Hope College history. As we see another scrum jump ball, which will go Hope's way. Traversa, yeah, you mentioned it, Blaine. I mean, far and away, most three-point field goals attempted for this team at 82 coming into tonight. Second on the team was Autumn Anderson with 36, so definitely more than doubled the amount of attempts three-point-wise for the Dutch coming into today's game. Yeah, sitting at about 39%, and after that make, getting her way uh, back up to that 40%. Right. Which, which is kind of the goal for a very good three-point shooter. Here she is again, top of the key, off left. Good rebound there by Knapke. Bell's going other way. Errant pass thrown there by Kohler. Looking inside, unfortunately, for the Bells going Hope's way. It's kind of pass where you need a, a Mora McAfee to catch Right, the height, the length there. Otherwise, that's just a turnover. 5 nothing early, Hope lead. Gaddy finds Perkins right wing. She gets into the lane, finds it. Left hand layup, pretty move by the junior. Just too easy. If they're going to allow the Dutch to get into the lane that easily, they haven't even had to go into their half-court offense no. very much. It's already 7-0. St. Mary's looking to buy its first bucket. Perkins, fiery defense through there. As we're swinging around. Kohler off mark for three. Gaddy. Rebound, pushing the other way. 
Nice look inside. And Anderson will be heading to the line for two here. You know, it's interesting. A lot of times you see on these senior days, senior nights, you'll see maybe some seniors that don't often get a lot of playing time get the start, get some time in the game. But it's really no different here. We've got two very good player, two. impact players. The only seniors on the team play quite a bit as it is. Good point there, too. Yeah, just a couple of seniors. What we talked about, the production, they've brought all four years of their careers here, Blaine. And we see Anderson, one of the two seniors at the line, looking to connect on her second of two. She's off the mark. But again, McAfee comes into today's game averaging a double-double. Seems like she's been doing that for eight years here. I mean, it's been consistent production from her. And Autumn Anderson, what she gives you on defense. Doesn't score a whole lot. Here she is right on cue. Steal and the bucket hey, for lot, the senior. A lot of credit to Angelique Gaddy on that play, too, to step in, make a tough passing lane. She just threw it kind of blindly, and Autumn recognized that, just stepped in, got the steal and the nice bucket. 10 nothing early. Uh, the Bells are in trouble. I said they can't go into the halftime down double digits to expect to win this game. The way no. they can make an adjustment play in the second half. We are four minutes into this game, and they're down by double digits. You said it, down by double digits, and we said earlier in the pregame, lost by. Here's a nice little replay right here. Uh, you can see Gaddy picking the pocket. This is early on in the game, and as I mentioned, just off the glass to herself. Got the board, put it up and in. That's the first bucket of the game right there. Right. Yeah, folks, hopefully we'll, we'll be getting you some nice replay tonight, too. Um, great for our coverage here at Hope College. Again, uh, just over four minutes into it. 10 nothing. Hope lead. Bell's still looking for their first bucket as it'll be Kohler once again setting up St. Mary's offense. Knapke looking to make something work here underneath into, that's off by Ronan. Yeah, really, they even that's not a great look inside because you're shooting in the trees right there. It's hard to get the ball up and out of the forest. So they're going to have a tough time scoring if that's their game plan. Quick collapse there on that defensive possession for Hope. Perkins looks to navigate. She is fouled in the act of shooting. She'll head to the line for two. Yeah, Shea with the foul there. And obviously, uh, tough as it is, you don't want to see Shea get in foul trouble and have to head to the bench. You do not. 12.6 points per game. Senior leader for the St. Mary squad. Senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Bishop Dwanger, as Perkins connects on her first. And here we are with Buchanan, Francesca Buchanan in for the Flying Dutch. We also have Paris Madison substituting in first action tonight for both Madison and Buchanan. Looks like Maddie Gear is in the game as well, so a little line change there. There you go. Good catch there, Blaine. So there's three new Flying Dutch on the court here, and we got a couple more checking in. So truly a line change, bringing in five yeah. new players right there. Right. Playing some pickup hockey. <laughs> Schwark and we got Schwark and Gorsica. Gorsica. Bell's still looking for the first bucket. Down 12 0, 5 10 to play first quarter. Yeah, well, guys, the sec, just looking at some of these stats on the line, I mean, St. Mary's obviously hasn't scored 0 for 4 from uh, from the field, 0 of 1 from deep, and only, you know, four rebounds are hanging in there with Hope getting some boards. Um, mm -hmm. The turnovers right there, already seven turnovers, and not going to win a game against a good team if you turn the ball over that much. Right, and they're right under 20 turnovers per game this season, so hope that'll cool off a bit here, as you mentioned, seven early turnovers for St. Mary's as Madison... Gears down to Madison, left corner. Madison stuck, but she's looking inside. Kicked out of there by Kohler. Again, aggressive defense from St. Mary's early, although see themselves down 12-0. Yeah, Buchanan just demanding the ball down on the block, and that is her spot right there. She'll turn over the shoulder and fade away and try and knock down that uh, short two. That's her shot. Madison screen from... Oh, there it is. <laughs> right on. You cannon off mark, though, the signature move. 
Gorsica to Madison. Going around gears. This was right wing off the mark, Gorsica. But we're going the other way over the back. Called on Schwark. Yeah, a little help there that the Bells needed because the Dutch are an aggressive team. They've been uh, trying to pound the boards and uh, pretty tough one right there, but uh, good for the Bells to get the ball back and try and put some points on the board. Indeed, trying to put points on the board here. Again, nice collapsing defense from Hope up top. That's short, but nice save attempt there by Ronan. Paris Madison up top. Swinging it around the perimeter, but now looking inside, and there you go, Blaine, again, help defense. Comes over, picks it. That's Kanapke on the steal. Kohler, right wing, and that's swiped away by Gears. Gears, left-hand layup is short and off the mark, but cleaned up by Schwark and put in. 14-0 oh. hope lead. Oh, even when it seems like finally... Bell's going to break. They miss a wide open breakaway layup and it's just rebound and put back in. Right now the Bells just need a basket just to start something to be convinced that they can score. They, oh my goodness. Another Dutch steal. Up and good by Gorsica. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just tough. It's demoralizing seeing yourself down 16 nothing. Like I said, they can even just get one basket that can start things up and just get things going. Finding some sort of momentum. Here's Kohler, three... Short. That would have been a big one to help him get going. It really would have. St. Mary's still looking for its first points. Schwartz, Madison. Here we are. Gears. A little strong. Yeah. Off the mark, and we're going St. Mary's way. <coughs> Coming into the game real quick. Uh, Gabby Crown gets a PT early on. And, and uh, you know what? I believe the record uh, defensively in one quarter for Hope, even though we've only been playing quarters for one season, sure. is four points. And, okay. and they tied that on Wednesday with Alma, and it's going four points in the second quarter. Huh. Uh, if they're going to break it, this is going to be the quarter right here. I tell you what, they just they need to get a couple stops, and, and they can do just that. How about that? So four, the record lowest points in a quarter against the Dutch. St. Mary's is trying. Kanapke back into Kanapke. Got it and and one. Oh, there it so is. So there we go. Oh boy, now now you know it's going to be tough for the Dutch now if if you know they can, especially hitting this free throw. I mean, you're one point away. You got to hold them scoreless for the last 220. If you want to break that, right? I want to see a record. That four number, here. right? I mean, I want to see a good game at the same time. Why we'll not some history? Record. Let's get the record and then St. Mary's can go out and run in the second quarter. We can get a good game going into the half. There we are. Off the mark. Knapke cannot complete the three-point play. 16-2. to 2-10. Two, two first quarter. Dutch early commanding lead. <coughs> Gears up top. Ursika into Buchanan. See what Mushi has there. Just strong. Left-handed attempt. Picked up Maloney. Maloney leading the way for St. Mary's. That's going to be a foul on Gorsica. A little bit of a touch foul there just to stop the momentum of the game for a moment, but see if St. Mary's can get another bucket here a couple times down in a row. That'd be nice to see. Like I said, you get one bucket, it can really start a trail. Right, find a little run. Little runs here and there. That could... That's off the mark. Going to say that could do well for them as Ronan off again. It's a good look for Ronan. Just had to settle in and then get the shot up. Madison, too strong. Foul on Buchanan. Buchanan picking up the uh, foul there, just trying to get aggressive going for rebounds. That's kind of looks like that's what uh, Hope will pick fouls up on here. A big team convinced that they can get every single rebound. Right. Wouldn't be surprised to see that pick up some fouls. With that height advantage, no doubt. Here we are, St. Mary's side now. That's going to be a foul on Hope, sending Crown to the line for two. Uh, Frankie just picked up her 
Second foul, right? Oh, excuse me. They're getting gears. I thought it was gears on, on it. Yeah. I think they mixed up one, two, and two, one because <laughs> that one. There's the only way that could have been a foul was if it were on Buchanan. Right. Gears looked a little confused for sure there. Yeah, Gears was wondering, but hey, she'll take it now. Every single player on the floor has got one now. <laughs> Instead of a Buchanan with two. So all right. Right. <laughs> so Randall now in for Schwartz for the Flying Dutch. Off the mark, both of them. The record's still in reach. It still is. As we mentioned earlier, four points, the record for fewest points allowed in the quarter. As we get that one up and in by Gears. Knockdown. Big three right there. She's had a few shots and good looks, and she's a good shooter. Just finally got herself comfortable in a good position, knocked it down, and big lead here for the Dutch. If they can get a stop, they could take a 20-something to two lead. Sure. Quarter. It's going to stick with the Bells here. Yeah, Gears, you mentioned strong shooter, uh, sophomore guard, 5'9", from Mason County Central, Scottville. And there you go. Bucket inside for Ronan. No new record. No new record. They can tie it, right? Tie it for the third time. It could be, sure. the, could be the third time they hold an opponent to four points in a quarter. But, uh, you know. Unfortunately, no. Sure history could tie a historic mark, but... Nice look inside. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, that's going to be Randall. That's a great find uh, down low there. Uh, Gorsia just got a real good dish inside, an easy bucket for Gears, and, or for Randall, excuse me. Good stuff right there. 21 4 as we see a steal now by Randall. Madison looking to push. Gorsia, three pointer left wing, off right. Long rebound, and that'll end the quarter here. Quarter one, Hope commanding lead, took it early off to that 10-0 run in a blink of an eye it seemed like. 21-4, Hope College advantage over St. Mary's here on senior day at DeVos Field. How's Blaine? What are you thinking? 17-point lead for Hope. We talked about, we already, you know, we've already mentioned a few times that record of holding the opponent to four points. Yeah, in the quarter. I mentioned, you know, when you were asking what's the key to the game for St. Mary's, and yeah. I couldn't offer you too much. That was the problem. I said they need to believe they can win, and they need to try and keep it close going into the half, because even when it is close, I've seen Hope blow teams out. Right. We're already in the first quarter here, 21-4. Starting lineup's about to check back in to get sure. a few more minutes of PT. They didn't play much there in the first quarter. But uh, uh, if Hope can get this thing up to, you know, at this point, it could be a 30-point lead at halftime. And by then, my goodness, they're going to have uh, – Oh, boy. Everybody's going to be played. We'll say that for Hope. They're going to have the back of the bench, and the back of the bench for this Hope team could, could be a starting lineup for a lot of these right. other teams in the MIAA. That's just how blessed they are, just full of talent on this squad. And Sharing so minutes tough. all year. No, they're absolutely, just... and that's why they're undefeated. They're such a tough team to beat. And uh, looking at the replay here, that's just Gears knocking down that three we right. talked about from the wing. And uh, Bench Bench loves it. Yeah, they're excited. And they're a great, they're a great team too. Coach Morehouse gets this team playing together well. There's, there's great chemistry. When you got this much talent and you play together as a team, uh, you can do just about anything you want. This team's going to make a run this year in the tournament. Depth goes a long way for sure. When you can again bring those waves off the benches, as, as you mentioned too, we see the starting lineup now back in for the Dutch. So maybe not quite comfortable with the 17-point lead, but what we saw in that first quarter definitely advantage hope today. As McAfee, good just beyond the free throw line. Nice touch from the senior. Yeah, the senior with that size, ability to rebound and score underneath the rim, just steps out and knocks down a 17-footer, and you kind of go, well, how do we defend here? <laughs> That's off the mark by Maloney. Headed Dutch's way. Up 23-4, McAfee inside. Good spin move, and she got it. Just so pretty, fundamental, technically sound. She gets a couple quick buckets here in the second quarter. There's no defending her, really, at this point. I mean, unless you've got somebody with the equal caliber of her, but you've already got a two-time All-American, probably going to be three-time All-American <laughs> out there. Absolutely. Suffocating D again for the Dutch. Oh, and rejection. The How blocks leader. My goodness. She's, they're just having so much fun out there. Look at them smiling, having a great time. And I mentioned them having great team chemistry, playing together. Right. It's so evident when you see one of their teammates make a big play. They're all, they're all really right behind them. No doubt about that. She McAfee, too, also just over two blocks per game. Again, in limited minutes, we're talking 22 minutes per game. As we see off the mark by Ronan from the free throw line. Oh, we're getting a Hope College foul. Hmm. 
you know, they went to the floor. A little eye roll there from Perkins. They both went to the floor trying to battle for the rebound, and uh, they were laying on the ground for a couple seconds before the, the ref called the whistle, called the foul. Yeah. I think he said, oh, man, I should probably call something here. <laughs> nice move inside, but off left by Kanapke. Nice look ahead, Anderson to McAfee, senior to senior. Why not? 27-4, hope advantage. That's just right, James, senior to senior. Woo. I had everybody in the crowd clap, and they love seeing that <laughs> on senior day. We'd like to see more of it, too. Again, not sure what the minutes will be like tonight, as we already see a 23-point advantage for Hope, 8.30 to play second quarter. Another nice spin move inside, but just looking to connect is Kanapke, the senior from Clayton, Ohio. She'll get to the line for two. <laughs> yeah, finally uh, able to draw a foul, at least, to get something going. And you wonder, you know, you see, I hope, I hope uh, those who vote on the All-American selections, as that first one's knocked down by Knapke, I hope they look at those minutes a game and take it in their consideration. Oh, yeah. As you mentioned, uh, McAfee's only playing half a game. She's still averaging over 15 points a game. It's like, oh okay, so goodness. she could be averaging 25 a game, you know. We're talking 20 and 15, maybe? Yeah. Points, oh, yeah. rebounds? Unbelievable. How about that, Knapke? I was just looking, Blaine, at her free throws this year. Not pretty, 28 of 63 coming into tonight, and she gets you two nice-looking ones right there, so Bells will take it for sure. The shot looked pretty good to me for the senior. Traverse the turnaround, bank shot, got it. How many different ways have we seen this team score already? We're talking about Traverse's potent three-point shooting ability. She gets down over just outside the block, turns and tosses one off the glass. She shows her post-game, too, quite often, and we talked about her extending it out to the three-point line frequently. As, whoo, nice oh. glass shot, using it as Gabby Crown. My goodness. The sophomore. That's some impressive soft touch, high off the glass from that far out. Very nice. Couple of good, quick answers by the Bells. As McAfee, deep two, got it, left wing. I thought she had a three there. I was going to say, that would have been, that would have been just Ooh. fantastic. Not usually something you see from her game. Right. She only tried eight threes, but she's made three of eight. So okay. if that would have been a three, she'd be four of nine on this. I mean, that's, that's 44%. That percentage. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll stick with St. Mary's here as we see Aspen Davis back onto the floor in for Maloney. 31-8. Hope lead, Kohler right side, she'll put it up, too strong, rebound Perkins. McAfee, nice oh. dish to Anderson, we get it again, Blaine, senior to senior, love it. Yeah, no dribbles needed all the way down up the floor and just an easy lay-in. St. Mary's just not getting back right now, and we're talking about how much talent Hope has, if they're not going to hustle as much as Hope, this is... Oh. As we're seeing, look at the score. I mean, we're seeing the way this is going to go. We're seeing that perimeter. Look at this defense. Still, they're not letting up at all. Anderson's looking to push. Gaddy connects. Anderson to Gaddy. Fast break game looking pretty for the Flying Dutch. Oh, and then a walk. I wasn't paying close enough attention to see it, but I see the referee calling that walk, and I think I look up and I'm like, man, yeah, they need to. This is it's one of those games where half the limit turnovers. Well, when you watch matchups like this, and you say, you know, a team like St. Mary's against a team like Hope, St. Mary's needs to catch a lot of breaks, and they're just not. They Hope's do. catching all the breaks right now. They it's, really. It's unfortunate. <laughs> you know, as we see Anderson get into the lane and put up to Anderson, senior from Wayland. 29-point Dutch advantage. Three from the corner is too strong, but no. nice cleanup by Davis. No, 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 James. That was a pass. <laughs> that was all yeah, right. One of the better. Make sure the assist goes one down of the there. Better set plays that Coach Hemley has drawn up. I can't look away too much, Blaine, because we just get another McAfee bucket there in transition. <laughs> I, I literally did not see that bucket, <laughs> basket go in at all. I didn't see that at all. <laughs> McAfee adding to her total. 39-10. Dutch, nice drive by Kohler. Looked pretty. Okay. Uses the glass. Okay, a little momentum. Now they got to play some defense, though. You got to get a stop here, as yep. you said, not catching many breaks. Big part of that is getting a few defensive stops and capitalizing the offensive. And Gaddy, oh boy, left corner, cans it. What do you do? I'll ask you an impossible question, James. <laughs> what do you do on defense to stop this Hope team? Well, you got so many. Women who can score. I mean, you're talking all five positions. Gaddy will just camp out left corner, and 
if they collapse on McAfee or Perkins driving in, Traversa, I mean, you got a good shooter on the perimeter, and we see another steal by Hope. And another push. Gaddy to Anderson, 44-12 now. When is it going to let up? Well, we don't know. It's a great question. As I said, you know, we keep talking about trying to get keep it in single digits at halftime. We're already at 32-point lead here, and we've got half of the second quarter. So oh. at this point, you know, I, it'd be about the most immaculate comeback of all time where St. Mary's <laughs> to come back and make this game close. And... Okay. Uh, Right now, just looking down that stat sheet. Yeah, I mean, read us some stats here. I mean, the, the numbers don't lie. St. Mary's have made three or four of the last ones in a row after we see the rejection here from McAfee yep. uh, rolling a few <laughs> replays. The team just loves it. <laughs> so they're shooting 25%, which is way better than what they would have been shooting before. They they made two or three buckets in a row yeah. there. Um, taking a look at another uh, replay here of, you know, somebody standing holding the ball. Uh, but then kicking it over. This is McAfee, the deep two, the just deep inside team. the line knocking it down and score from just about anywhere on the floor, just about any player on the floor. So as I mentioned, just a matchup nightmare. And uh, when I ask you, how can you stop this Hope oh. team? And you asked me that before the game. <laughs> if you're wondering why I didn't have much to say, well, just look at the scoreboard. Oh my goodness. So, and 21 points for Hope in the first quarter, already 23 and half a quarter here in the second. Let's catch you up who's on the floor now. As we see Perkins and Shork exit. For the Dutch. Looks like we have Hedrick Buchanan. We have Gorsica. Randall there defending inside. She'll get the rebound, but it's going to be a foul. Mary Gibson in there as well. And right now you're just seeing a complete line change. You have the starting lineup in there just uh, running a muck out there on the floor. And then now a chance for some other places to get in and play, but I mean, I'll take these five any day of the week against a lot of different teams. I mean, just so much depth on this team. You said it earlier, you can take bench players, five off the bench for the Dutch, put them as a starting lineup, and I mean, I would take it beyond MIAA play too and have a super successful season. Talk about how they just come at you. War of attrition in a way. As we see Kanapke Get the second free throw there. Hope's way now. Inside, Buchanan finishes. Nice, Strong move. Nice body control. Looked like she kind of got bumped aside just a little bit, turned around, and got it off the glass and in. 33-point advantage, Hope. Kohler gets into the lane again. Too strong. Jump ball. You know, I got to mention something here. Hedrick gets in the jump ball situation. And uh, <laughs> last game I called on Wednesday with Eric, I think she had at least six or seven jump balls alone. Holy smokes. Uh, so she's really uh, great for trying to get the basketball <laughs> for your team. <laughs> right. Nose for the ball. Undoubtedly here. Kohler looking to set up the Bells offense. Another Ooh. deflection by Hope. Good look. Just short, though, off the mark by Maloney. Gibson, swing around perimeter game here. That's going up and deep, too strong off the mark by oh. Garcia. Hedrick gonna get called going over the back. She didn't really like it. Uh, no, it's like I didn't. mentioned, this is, and you look at the foul total now, St. Mary still hasn't been called for a foul here, but five for Hope. And, uh, right. and uh, with the new rules, a lot of people aren't aware of in uh, Women's basketball going to quarters. The fifth foul for any team in a quarter goes to an automatic, what we would consider the double bonus situation. Okay. Where they shoot two free throws. So uh, now Hope's got to be careful because St. Mary's has a chance to get some points at the line. And you don't want, I mean, again, 33-point advantage, but clock does stop. Get the, you allow the bells to rest. You get them at the line for a couple, as you said, five fouls. Puts them in double bonus. Five and a quarter. Yep. Kohler connects on first of two. Yeah, and like I said, this Hope team believes they can get every single rebound. I think that's the case down there with Hedrick just going up against two St. Mary's players mm -hmm. getting called for over the back. Mm -hmm. Good look there from the line for Kohler. She makes both of them. Inside, we're going block here. Yes, block as Hedrick attempting to get into the lane there. 
Yeah, Kohler picking it up, just her first. Really, the Bells, that's the one area they've been better than Hope is on avoiding fouls. They haven't had a lot of chances to foul when Hope's scoring so easily sometimes. Gibson called for traveling. Turnover, Hope headed St. Mary's way. That's what you need, Blaine. You need to stop. You need a few Hope turnovers if you're St. Mary's, and but you got to capitalize on the offensive end too. Yeah, that being said, Hope's still tripling up plus one on St. Mary's, so they've got to do a lot of that. Yep. Inside move off the mark by Macius. See Macius for the first time down low, putting the move on Hope's trees underneath the 5'10 freshman from Inverness, Illinois. Really a lot of great size in the St. Mary's team. One of the few teams that can somewhat uh, try to compare with Hope, still hope for the advantage, but a lot of good size. There you see size in the <laughs> underneath for Hope is nice. Buchanan. Love her footwork underneath. Sit the six-foot All-American, bring in the six-foot freshman who's yep. scoring 10 points a game, who, <laughs> who's, who when she gets more minutes next year with McAfee going out, she's going to score a lot more than that. She could be Hope's next All-American, in my opinion. You can count on increased production. Again, like you said, almost double figures averaging this year as a freshman, but let's see that increase as her career transpires. Good from the left side. That's Randall. Sophomore from Northville. 50 points here, Blaine. We got 2.30 to play first half. Boy, oh boy, I mean, you're just, again, St. Mary's looking to find something on the offensive end, but it really doesn't look like the Dutch have held up on defense, let alone the offensive attack. <laughs> Scrum on, on the floor here. Shot clock at one, and we're going to get a shot clock violation. Yeah, you know, tough for Hope not to get a steal when they had three players standing there trying to hold out of the ball, oh, but in the goodness. end, they come up with a shot clock violation instead, and 50 points and a half. Uh, still still time to score more. You don't see that too often uh, in the, the women's game, but this team has scored 100 this year. They have the ability right. to do it, it's, which is just incredible. Average just over 80 points per game for the season, well on their way to that today. Again, Buchanan. She will head to the line for two off the mark, but she'll get a couple free throws. What's the turnover count here for oh. St. Mary's? Well, just looking at St. Mary's, they got 14 now. 14, okay. Which, you know, they say they average almost 28 games, right. so it looks like they're going to go over that even. But you got to look at Hope's ability to force turnovers too, so that's obviously not helping them. Um. All right, we'll get that number here. You can and can't get the first to go, but uh, we do know Hope is averaging just under 14 steals per game. So sheesh. that's unbelievable. Pretty remarkable there. Buchanan gets one of two. Schwark in for Buchanan. Knapke, Ronan, Kohler, Maloney, Macius. On the floor for the Bells. As again, they just look to find some sort of rhythm on the offensive end. Just 15 points with a minute 40 to play in the second quarter. Hmm. Turn around. Looked a little off balance there, but Ronan got one to fall. The junior. Yeah, nice look for Ronan. She was one of seven before that, so good to see her get one to drop again. Right on. That's 17 points now for St. Mary's into the lane. Hedrick is going to get called for traveling. Hope turnover. That'll be Hope's seventh. Minute 10, first half. Dutch up 34 off the mark. Nice rebound by Schwartz. Gibson right side, oh. and one, but Wait. no. What? Walking uh, again. Boy, I agree. Allison Hedrick uh, certainly took an extra step last time down. Gibson just got bumped and put up a shot from what looked like two steps at the most. I'm a little confused there, but sure. uh, it's 51-17, so I'm not going to get up on my uh, soap today. I quickly called an <laughs> and one there as that is swatted on out to the stands. Boy, that's a pretty nice rejection right there from Hedrick. Hedrick's an example of a player for Hope that uh, is kind of the middle of the road on their squad and just comes into the game and just 
out there. She's one of the best <laughs> players on the floor, the way yeah. she plays defense and the way she can uh, aggressively get to the basket on the offensive end as well. I mean, how many sure. teams would be blessed to have a player like Hedrick? Give it to you on both sides of the court. Kohler, seven on the shot clock off left. Offensive rebound, though. Picked up by Macius. Locked out of there. Randall to Buchanan. Sorry. Gorseca. Am I, correct me on my pronunciation, Blaine, please. Well, I believe they say Gorsica here. Gorsica. I always thought it was Gorsia, but they say Gorsica. Gorsica. Starts, I suppose. That's <laughs> what we'll go with. Chance for one more bucket here. 5.7 seconds left. Second quarter. That's going to be on Macius. Sorry, Kohler. Correction. I think it was on Macius, but it's Kohler took disbelief to that. Inside, Randall. That'll do it. That'll do it. Sorry again. I'm. I believe that was Schwark on the two. Whatever the case, we'll get the stats right here. 55-17, hope lead at the half. We saw 34 points put up by the Dutch there, second quarter, Blaine. We talked about their third quarter attack. Holy smokes, they come out, put up, tw it seemed like 20 points in a matter of seconds, really, in the second quarter there to extend the lead. 55-17, we're headed to halftime. We do, we'll go over some stats here. I just want to mention real quickly again, we're here at Hope celebrating the 2006 national championship team. The women's squad from 2006 went 33-1, and a Hope record. And they won it in Springfield, Massachusetts. I know that was the venue, the birthplace of basketball. So a cool tidbit right there. We'll get that presentation here soon. But let's run through a couple of the numbers from the first half. Yeah, uh, you know, 55-17 is the big number that people are going to yeah. look at and say it's almost unbelievable looking at a, that kind of deficit, uh, a 38-point lead for Hope. Uh, not much you can say looking at the numbers. They're making two out of three shots out there. That helps 24 of 36. Yep. Uh, St. Mary's just 6 of 29, shooting 20% from the field. So they're making more than three times as many shots as St. Mary's. Right. Uh, St. Mary's is 0 for 5 from deep, so they're not getting any help on the three ball. Uh, you know, rebounding, you know, for St. Mary's, they're sticking around with Hope, not doing too bad, um, which is really impressive considering, uh, you know, Hope's not missing a lot of shots, so still able to get some right, rebounds. Right. So, 67%. But, but, but turnovers, uh, St. Mary's twice as many tur turnovers as Hope, they got 15, and, uh, and really just not a lot you can say. Going down the line, they're scoring. McAfee's got 10, Anderson with 9, good to see the seniors up there. Sure. 7, 5, 4, 5, 4, 4, 5, you know, just down, down the line, everybody's scoring. So typical, Seems like a typical... Typical right. game for Hope. Uh, down the board, everybody's scoring. They're rebounding. Uh, they're forcing turnovers. And right now they're doing it at a higher rate than they really ever do even. We're taking a, just a quick look here. We're running some a few replays for you. We figured might as well for half. But 55-17 lead. Looking, uh, if you're St. Mary's, and that's the first bucket of the game we're going back to again. But uh, if you're if you're St. Mary's, I mean, what do you what do you even do here in the second half? What's your what's the conversation with your coach Henley here at the half? You, know? you just yeah, you got to imagine because we talked about the last time they played on January 6th, 93-53, Hope win, you know, 40 point victory there. As we you're seeing replay on the screen now, we're seeing the 2006 Hope Dutch squad getting honored. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 17 points, tough to swallow for a whole half, down 38. I mean, we'll see how Hope attacks. Do. I mean, that's going to be interesting to see what Hope does here coming out in the third quarter. Will the starters be on the floor to start the second half? But I mean, you know, looking at the the Bell scoring two, five points for Knapke, and then you just go 4-4, four, 2-2. Four, two, two. That rounds it up. We talked about defensive stops, but I mean, just both ends of the floor. We're seeing the substitution, some five for five for Hope, and it's just fresh legs, fresh legs. And again, five off the bench for Hope can start in this conference and have a, a great year. It's just, I'm not saying it's hopeless, but you got to come out and as the coach, hey, let's get this under 30. Let's keep cutting it. Let's get another stop, maybe get it to 20. 
But you just got to cut away at the lead. You can't say, hey, we're going to make 38 points up in a quarter. No, you can't. You got to go by increments. And hopefully St. Mary's can come out, get a few stops, capitalize on offense, see where they go from there. Pretty great to see this 2006 National Championship team honored right now. And uh, everybody to their feet, clapping. Um, and uh, really just great to see this, this team and where they've come. I mean, not just on the basketball floor, but in their lives. Sure. A lot of them out here with families, with kids, and it's so interesting to see. Uh, cool for them to come back here. They were the team that, that opened up play here at DeVos. The very first year they played at DeVos yes. in the national championship. Pretty cool thing. Cool thing. Again, a 33 and one record put up by that 2006 national championship team. Just a quick, there's a quick note here on that year, Blaine. Uh, Brian Morehouse, yes, he was coaching. Yes, he had another successful season. They defeated Southern Maine in the title game in Springfield, Massachusetts to join the 1990 team as national championships. And we said it pregame too, Morehouse, 18th consecutive year with 20 plus wins. Unbelievable, Mark. Mm -hmm. Well, great to see the team out here, and we've got about ten and a half minutes or so up there uh, on the clock uh, before we can start up the second half of action. And uh, I suppose we can take a little bit of a break here and uh, get we some will. time and and uh, run it back. You know, we'll for the take a half. quick break here. 55-17. Hope with the major advantage. 20 minutes to play here at DeVos. Would love if you could join us for the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to each game, the event staff chooses three numbers, and when that number on the clicker comes up, the next person who walks through the door is a winner. Tonight's Clicker Cup winners were Chip Dobbin, Dennis Vosco, and Mike Remo. Each of today's winners receive a free popcorn, soda, and candy, compliments of creative dining. Also, Hope College Athletics is excited to celebrate National Girls and Women in Sports Day on Wednesday, February 10. Middle school girls are invited to attend an evening of events to celebrate the energy and achievements of girls and women in sports with Hope College female student athletes. For more information and to register for this event, please visit athletics.hope.edu or stop by the program stand on the concourse. Lawrence and Vandersworth Financial Planning are lending a helping hand to Hope College student athletes this basketball season. Every time either the men's or women's basketball team reaches 15 assists during a game here at DeVos Fieldhouse, Lawrence and Vandersort will donate $75 to the Athletes Community Together slash Student Athletic Advisory Committee. Thank you to Lawrence and Vandersort for their support of Hope College Athletics. And just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, the men's game this evening at 7.30 versus Alma requires a separate ticket. This game is sold out and is a reserved seat game. We will be clearing the gym between games and you must have a ticket to re-enter. There will be no IDs or passes for the men's games this evening. And finally, we have a winner for the Buffalo Wild Wings Brain Buster Trivia Contest. Congratulations to Lauren Deistermars for winning the Buffalo Wild Wings Brain Buster Trivia. And this just in, she has decided to donate that prize to her father, so thank you to Lauren Deistemars, your Buffalo Wild Wings Brain Buster Trivia winner.
play with four seconds left in this contest, down by three. Spells, that's a great effort to get back where we are. Well, look at that, we got four seconds. We gotta have a three, it can't be a two, we're down three. And here's what we're gonna do. Jed, you're gonna make this and we'll win the game in overtime. Welcome back here at DeVos Fieldhouse, getting ready for the second half of St. Mary's at Hope. Hope, dominant first half, 55-17, 21 points in the first quarter, followed by a massive 34 pileup in the second quarter to take a 38-point advantage into the half. We got pretty balanced scoring as normal from the Dutch side, and just 17 points for the Bells, who will look to come out here second half get a few stops, capitalize on offense, make a little run of their own, cut into this Dutch lead. But again, we talk hope, Blaine, nearly 30 point advantage, point differential on the season, 20 games into this. On senior day, we should mention also, as you see the McAvee and Anderson graphics and film go by there, they're having a strong game so far, 10 points McAfee, nine points Anderson. Quick again, what you saw in the first half, what you're looking forward to second half, and then mention any milestones we got going here sure. in this game and maybe look ahead to the men's game later tonight. Yeah, we mentioned milestones. We They thought maybe Hope had a chance in that first quarter to break their uh, defensive uh, <coughs> scoring record in a quarter, but uh, uh, got up to four, did St. Mary's, so they're just going to have to stick with that uh, for now. Obviously, before the game, we talked about Coach Morehouse with the opportunity to get his 500th win 
today, and uh, I don't think too many people doubt that that will be the case at this point. So uh, well on his way. I'll just give an early congratulations, to Coach Morehouse, <laughs> on what looks like will probably be his 500th win. That's the biggest jinx somebody can give a team. So I guess I do that just because I want to see a good game. So St. Mary's <laughs> wow us and get us back in here for something uh, enthralling. Also want to make a quick mention of the men's game tonight, 7:30, yes. and this is the big one. Huge. Folks. Alma and Hope. Uh, Alma undefeated in the MIAA. Hope's only lost two Alma. They need this win uh, in order uh, to get a chance to win the conference and, and more importantly, host uh, the MIAA tournament because that's a huge right. advantage. Playing at Hope, our Alma can be the difference between a win and a loss. So we'll Who's see tonight at 7.30. Yeah, we got 18-2 and two Hope men going up against 16-4 and four Alma. Combined 17-1 and one in MIAA play. That's going to be electric as we start the second half here. Off the mark, McAfee. So we do see the normal starters on the floor to start the second half here for Hope. Quick miss by Hope, so we'll see if St. Mary's can take an early edge here in the third quarter. That's up and off the mark, but offensive board for the Bells. <coughs> Inside, good look. Shea's too strong off the glass. Nice movement there uh, and got a good look, just couldn't quite finish it. So here we are, we play 10 minute quarters again in the women's game. We mentioned five fouls in a quarter, we'll put a team in double bonus. Two free throws after every foul there. Perkins, great look inside to Anderson. Double digits now for both seniors, that's 11 points for Anderson actually on top of McAfee now. So see if we can get a little friendly competition between the seniors, see if you can get more points here on senior day. Good to see from the fourth year players. McAfee and Anderson looking to drive inside Maloney. Yeah, it looked like off the hands of Ronan. She just kind of let it yeah, it fall like, out of bounds. It looked to me like she definitely could have gotten that ball. Right, just kind of held hands back. Didn't make the effort for it as if she thought somebody else touched it, but it was <laughs> off of her for sure. <laughs> cool halftime presentation there again of the 2006 National Championship squad. Flying Dutch. Who went 33 and one? As we see, McAfee kind of off balance, floating away off the mark. Kohler looks to push, and it's Maloney left side, and stuck with that suffocating defense off the mark. Ronan, yeah, tough shooting night, obviously for the Bells. Uh, just looking down at the sheet, they're under 20 percent now as a team. You won't min win too many ball games doing that period, let alone when you're playing a team like Hope, and uh, especially when Hope's shooting almost 65% as a team from the field. Yeah. 65 is tough to match and even tougher to beat. Good offensive board cleaned up there by Kanapke. Hope's way now. McAfee up top. Gaddy left wing. She finds the opening and she is off the mark, but oh, Perkins. It's a rebound, strong move, off glass, just off the mark. McAfee, what she does so well, rebound offensively too. It's just incredible. To watch. It's a clinic every game in the paint from her. Most teams aren't going to score in that scenario after they already had two good looks and missed both times, couldn't get to go. <laughs> and then Hope just gets another time, third time's the charm. McAfee goes up, gets the foul chance to get her team a few more points from the line. And it's the effort that just hasn't, again, hasn't let up yet. It's relentless as Hope looks to extend its lead to 40 here. See Hope's AD, Tim Schoonfeld, and the president, President Knapp on the screen for a brief moment there. Picking out the celebrities here on <laughs> campus. <laughs> Those two have to like what they see and you know they're getting primed and ready for tonight's men's game as we see Traversa on the push after the steal. She finds oh, yeah. Perkins, that's good. You know, you mentioned they're getting excited for the men's game. Not that they weren't excited for this women's game either, but at this point, you know, it, it seems uh, to be a little bit more of an entertaining affair, at least tonight, uh, we should hope. Absolutely, as we see Hope balloon its lead to 42. Another steal, another Bell's turnover, and another push. Hey, Blaine, that was not well executed. That's the first, you know, kind of iffy executed fast break opportunity there from Hope. It's been pretty all night, but they've been fantastic so far. And right there, um, you know the pass was well off the mark. If you throw it down court and even more, McAfee can't go up and get it. So uh, definitely off the mark on that one. Sure. Kohler left side. 
She's going to get two shots as Gaddy questions the call. Yeah, Gaddy uh, not happy with the call there. But at this point, also, Gaddy needs to understand that it just does not matter. Uh, <laughs> at this point in the game, um, sometimes, I don't want to say that this is the case, but perhaps officials might uh, loosen things up and allow the other team to try and get a few points from the paint uh, when you've got this kind of deficit. And with Fergatti, when you are up by that much and it's only your first foul, I wouldn't be too worried about mm -hmm. it. But understandable because Angelique is a competitor. No sure. matter what, she's ready to compete in this she game. She felt like she so had a great defensive stand that's there. That's right. So on her, on, on the other, on the other side of that, uh, I, I see where she's coming from. Just got to look at the Bell's head coach Jen Henley on the screen, find, trying to find a, a little run momentum for her squad. Looks like a foul here on Kanapke. Anderson will take it out of bounds for the Dutch who lead by 40. Anderson left side, McAfee will go to work in the lane. Just slapped out of there by Perkins who tried to keep the possession alive. Bell's way. <coughs> Tough pass inside. I mean, you got length and trying to get through three Dutch there, but tally another St. Mary's turnover is Anderson from the right side, Ooh. just short. Looked pretty good when she put it up, an open look, and she squared herself up to the basket. Just left a little short, it was right on line. Love to see seniors scoring on senior day. Oh yeah, you do. And we got McAfee with 12, Anderson with 11 to lead the way for the Dutch in scoring. Good That's look. good. Kanapke. Needed that. Uh, Obviously, everybody a little slow on the side for the Bells as far as scoring goes, but able to get nine points now. She leads her team. Sure. Perkins in the lane. Great look. <laughs> Too strong. One but senior can't get it, so the other cleans it up. <laughs> who's there cleaning up, too? Yeah. Said her name plenty of times on the broadcast today, but why not? It's her day, senior day. Maura McAfee. It's a wide-open Kohler. Uh, lost on defense for the Dutch. Did we stop playing basketball for a moment there? Uh, look at Something the odd there. The Hope team was huddling on the floor. I didn't catch what was happening. Kohler kind of looked, why do I have this much space? First time I've had this much space in, you know, 25 minutes of play today. You know, bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off is what they're thinking. <laughs> we'll pretend that there was a timeout call and see if they stop playing too. Anderson, oh. that falls in for her. Why not? The senior day roll. Her day too. It. Yeah. Yep, the senior day roll. Winter team back up by 40. <laughs> wow. So a little lapse on defense since we saw Kohler hit the three just a moment ago, but Anderson right back the three as we see Kanapke. A couple of nice looking shots there, Blaine, from number 30. Yeah, you know, if you're St. Mary's, you've got to have goals right now. I mean, you can't expect yourself to win this game, but you need to have goals. You still need to go out and compete. So right now, maybe for them, that's getting this game within 30 points. Right. I mean, that sounds like not much of a goal, but... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just, just to try and get closer in this game and try and compete, I guess that's another good goal for you. All right, we talked about trying to chip away in increments as we see a sure 5-5 five, five sub for the Dutch. First get the entry for the Bells, Caroline Macius, number 15 in. A new team in for Hope completely, 5-for-5, five five, the change out. And we'll see how this contingent does early on. We already see gears. Coast to coast. She's got about three steals now. She did that twice in the first half. She yep. missed it the one time, but then picked up by her teammate. But she's got three breakaway steals already. You can always guarantee, too. Great point there about someone cleaning it up. Just if, it, if one Dutch steals it, she's going the other way. You know a couple or a few are right behind her, ready to help her out if something goes wrong. As we see a 38-point lead for Hope. Just under four to play. Third quarter. DeVos Fieldhouse, senior day. Paris Madison up top. She's looking to make something work. Great defense by Kohler. Buchanan, good in the lane. Just got stopped there, but off the mark gears. Kohler looks to push. Stop there. Look to get something to fall on offense for St. Mary's. Three ball. Too strong, Ronan. <laughs> They'll get to stay with it, though, fortunately, for the Bells. Uh, 
Gorsica just didn't quite hang on to it. You know, that three was really rushed right there. Mm -hmm. um, and offensively, you're not looking for anything in particular when you're down by 38, but just try and score some points. Sure. Probably get a better look than that. No need to rush. Uh, as I mentioned, you're not looking to come back and try and win this game. I mean, you are, but you need to try and be realistic. Nice, yep. uh, nice inside there to draw the foul, though. Um, a Ronan who's had, you know, a tough day along with everyone else. Two mm -hmm. of 11, but a chance to get a few more points to the line here. See Ronan to the line here. Six foot junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Off the mark on attempt one of two. Kanapke, we mentioned her earlier. She's the first bell in double figures. She has 11 to lead the way for St. Mary's as Ronan gets her second fall. Dutchway, Madison, Gears, Schwark. Just naming the players on the floor. Buchanan going to work here underneath. That was strong help defense resulting in the jump ball headed St. Mary's way. Bells will get it back. Nice defensive possession. Good showing there from St. Mary's. Speaking of a good showing, pretty solid crowd here at Tomas Fieldhouse as I look Absolutely. around as always. And are we thinking folks are getting here already for no, no, the no, men's no, game? No, 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 no. It's a separate ticket, so they actually are going to clear right. the house here. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, yeah, it might be a few trying it. Uh, might need to check the bathroom stalls in between games, <laughs> see if anybody's trying to hang around and get in. <laughs> now that I think about it. Right. I'm just kidding. I've got my student ticket. I should be good. Got to, the student should ticket. Be, should be good to uh, get in. So, unfortunately... For those of you at home, I won't be able to grace you with my color commentary for the men's game also. Blaine will be off the call, unfortunately, for us for Alma Hope coming up at 7.30. I have other duties. Sure. Tell us again about what, what's the theme tonight for the Duke crew. That's If you're not familiar with Duke crew, that's Hope's student section who turns out so well throughout the basketball season. Blaine, a big part of it. Blaine, tell us a little bit. Sure. For those of you you know that do know about the Duke crew, generally all orange is the theme. and It looks pretty great here in DeVos with the blue seats. And, yes. Uh, the squad going with the all orange jerseys at home a lot this year too. Yeah. But you know, Alma being as good as they are this year and having a game this big that isn't a Calvin game is something different, you know. Right. So we thought we'd do something different as well. We're going with our first ever luau. The luau. It. <laughs> and it's a Hawaiian slash beach theme. So everybody come on out with your beach gear. Should be a fun time for the students. And we got a few uh, few different surprises. And when you look over there, you'll see some right on. things. And a few things will be, you know, given away to students and whatnot. So it should be a great time. It's always fun. And uh, sitting right in front of uh, Casey Rutledge, recent grad, who's yes. a big member of the Duke crew as well, he always coined the term, it's a two-hour party. <laughs> and, we, and we like to hold on to that one. That's exactly what it's going to be. Instead of a two-hour party, it'll be a two-hour luau tonight in the Duke crew. Woo! And I will have a great viewpoint from it here. We might get Blaine on a little halftime analysis, get a little do crew, what, what it's like over there sure. for the first 20 minutes of the men's action. Again, that game starting up at 7.30 tonight. Same venue right here in DeVos Fieldhouse. It's number 12, Alma, at number 7, Hope. Looking for a barn burner for sure. And the do crew, the Hope students, Lou out. Yeah, I'm, make I'm, note of that. I'm down for that. I'll stop by, give my analysis. And, you know, for those of you... Uh, that don't know, I certainly love being in the Duke crew, and I'm a little bit more biased, perhaps, than I would be on the call. Maybe <laughs> some of you think I'm biased anyways on the call, but uh, I'll try and try. Right. I'll try and quickly turn off the switch and turn on the switch again, come over here at halftime maybe, <laughs> give my peace of mind what I thought about the game so far. <laughs> right on. We'll look to add that to the itinerary for tonight's game. Catch you up a little bit on the action here. Off the mark by Shea. We just saw... Buchanan on the other end, get a bucket for Hope. Three ball going up left wing. That's Ooh. Splash City Gorsica. by Gorsica. Knocking it down, and everybody on this team can score from anywhere. It's unbelievable. 74-33 lead back up into the 40-plus uh, lead. Uh, pretty tough looking up at the scoreboard. But St. Mary's still right. fighting, giving it their all. Looking to create something on offense. We've talked about them trying to find a flow. Hard to come by, but that's a nice drive. That'll put 35 points on the board for St. Mary. Shea came into the night leading the Bells and scoring at just over 12 and a half per game. Pretty move inside. Third quarter wrapping up here in DeVos as we get a deep corner three just off the mark, but cleaned up, and they do it so well. 
explain. That's Schwartz cleaning up the miss by Gorsica. Yeah, I mention this every time I call a girls game. You got a girl like Schwartz rolling off the end of the bench there, jumping in, cleaning up offensive boards and getting buckets at 6-1. 6-1 sophomore. Just rolling in, 6-1 right. sophomore. You got the six-foot uh, freshman if you can, and plenty of young talent. This team and uh, this program is in very good hands. Darn it, Buchanan, I was just talking about how good you were. <laughs> the tough, tough look there out on the open end. They have uh, evidence to his words. Come on now. <laughs> the, the breakout has been strong uh, for Hope on the, the transition offense. Just off the mark there, but picking up a board. There it is. I like the aggressiveness still. I mean, you're down 39, but you're still, you're still getting in the face of the Dutch. As we see Maloney not giving up on the play, tried to go for the offensive board. Wasn't successful, but still tried to steal the way. Unfortunately for her, it's going Hope's way. 20 seconds to play, third quarter. Almost to the final stanza here. Hope versus St. Mary's. Yeah, Hope gonna get one more shot up here should they choose to hold for a moment. Really not a lot of strategy going into the game right now, but uh, <laughs> poked away and we're going the other way. Three seconds on the clock. Let's see what Maloney can do. That's Way off the mark as we head into the fourth quarter. 76-37, advantage hope. We'll see how Morehouse plays his squad here in the final 10 minutes of action, up 39. We said it, Morehouse, head coach for hope, looking for his 500th victory. Quite amazing, really. He'll go 576. And uh, looks like Hope's going to have the starting lineup in coming into this next uh, quarter. Minus, okay. minus one from the looks of things. Um, trying to get a gauge on who checked in. And it, and it looks like almost all starters. And there's somebody that we don't have listed down there on the bench. Number 20 just checked in. Okay. According to our roster, uh, we do not have a 20. I know we're trying to try to scrounge up something here, but yeah, I'm not seeing a number 20 on my. Well, you know, Paris Madison usually here. wears the twos. I saw her wear a 20 on Wednesday when they went with the orange uniforms, but for number 20 in the white uniforms. Oh, let's see here. Jessica Dornoff. Yeah, Jessica Dornoff coming to the game. So, all right, uh, great chance for her to mix in with uh, some of the starters from, uh, if she indeed is coming in. She came up to the scorers table okay. to check in, so I imagine that'd be the case. As now we see. Uh, the Alma uh, JV <laughs> squad rolling into the game. We do have the men's JV That's game before right. yes. um, uh, the varsity game. And uh, with a 39-point lead, not much else to do here for the Dutch, but just keep playing a little bit of basketball and have some fun for the seniors. You hope to see him get some baskets. I want to see more McAfee take a three ball. Sure, sure. That's what I want to see because she can hit one here. I wouldn't that, that put the season three-point shooting percentage up to 44%. That'd be pretty spectacular. Right. Here we go. Nice move inside, but off the mark. We've seen that move quite a bit from Kanapke. Unfortunately, can't connect there, but I like the spin move. Still being aggressive in the paint. We are in the final quarter here of the women's game. We have men's JV. Oh, Anderson, got to call this one right wing. Canned it, the senior. Three balls for days. Anderson, that's her spot on the right wing. She really likes to shoot from there. And uh, 17 points now, leading all scorers. She's on top of McAfee with 14. So the battle continues. McAfee needs a three to tire. Yes. And we want to see the three ball go up as we see off the mark there by Maloney. But back into the hands Ooh. of the Bells. Nice roll there for Napke to get that one up and in. Quietly having herself a very good game, really. Sure. She's up to 13 points. F 15 after that bucket. Oh, my goodness. That one right there, Anderson to McAfee. Sounds like a broken record tonight, but we, we don't mind. I mean, it's senior day. Yeah. We like to see that. McAfee was 16 points and five boards. Anderson was 17 and four assists. Whew. So doing all of it. Ooh, nice take. Kohler's got that quick first step. She can find the lane pretty easily. And if she connects, I mean, it looks good. She's got nice inside-outside game. Yeah, McAfee going to give up for over the back. Saw that coming there. I mean, really, she's just taller than everyone. She's not making contact with anybody. She can literally just reach over top of them to get that board. Sure. But uh, from when you see that look, you're going to get the uh, over-the-back call. I was not surprised to see that at all. <laughs> Hope now has eclipsed its season average in points. They headed into today's game, 80 per game. We're going to get a foul here on Traversa. Traversa trying to reach in, snag the ball. She'll just be called. 
uh, for the reach-in foul, getting a little hold on the arm. So Leeds at 40, I talked about a goal for the Bells was to try and keep this game within 30. Sure. I mean, they can still do that if they can go on a run, play some defense. But and again, Hope's got the uh, almost complete starting lineup in here. So right. uh, easier said than done. Right, and we've seen a lot of the same Bells on the floor all game, Blaine, tonight. And looking the minutes per game to going into today's game, Shea, uh, we got, sorry, Kohler. Kanapke all averaging over 33 minutes per game, so they see the floor quite a bit every night out. Nice steal, though. Still working at it, I'm telling you. Hey, I got a chance. If they can go on a run here, I and get it's it done. It's good to boost the confidence. You, you just got to find the little things, too, in a 40-point in a game like this. Close it out with some positive play and I mean, take so that into the next statistically game. Statistically speaking, St. Mary's is out of contention. Sure. Oh, boy, for the uh, tournament. So you just got to find little things like that all over the place to try and get your team's confidence and start rebuilding and thinking uh, about where this program can go. Right. Nice touch by Shea on the other end for St. Mary's. Here's Shea looking to push again. Tough feed, but it did get <laughs> to Ronan. Oh, looking up ahead. Here we go. Anderson, nice dish back hey to her. Why not? Another bucket for the senior. Anderson to Dornoff. Back to Anderson for two. What's she at now, Blaine? 19? Or? Uh, Anderson, yeah, jumping up there with another basket. That should be 19, it is. Poked away by Anderson as <laughs> Caddy up to oh. Nice effort right there. Maloney sneaking in, poking it away. Looked like a sure layup there for... Uh, McAfee, who's right now trailing in the uh, senior scoring battle with Anderson. <laughs> and uh, Anderson. Autumn checks out of the game. And for what could be the last time. Sure, number 10 there, you can see. Autumn, what a game today. And Shirley Buchanan coming in to take the place of Maura McAfee. Might be looking to get her Ooh. her final bucket, and she'll, t she'll exit here quickly. Gaddy. Again, what they do so well, offensive boards, they'll keep coming at you. Another second chance point there for Hope off the mark, Shea. Gaddy long rebound, she'll slow it up. 6.35 play, Morehouse wants a substitution timeout here. And here it is, Maura McAfee serves a standing O for her four-year commitment to Hope Basketball. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize that, and I'm not sure either, but I'm thinking that's the last time they're going to come out, and it almost seems to catch people off guard that it wasn't at the same time or you know, right. just a couple minutes left. Or usually you'd see a standing <laughs> ovation. I don't think they realize what they just saw. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 16 points for Mac. A beautiful drive by Gaddy. McAfee, number 14, six-foot senior from Midland, Michigan. And Autumn Anderson just giving the two seniors another shout out here on their day. Anderson, the senior, 5'9 guard from Door, Wayland High School. Yeah, I, uh, being from Byron Center myself, uh, mm -hmm. uh, knew Autumn a little bit as well, just you know, growing up pretty close to the area, and just from playing sports, competing in competitive sports. Obviously, I wasn't playing against her, but uh, <laughs> with my sister going to school there, playing against her in softball, uh, kind of right. got to know her a little bit. Uh, through that, and uh, so for a long time, known I've known her as a softball player more, more than I've known her as a basketball player, mm -hmm. and uh, it's hard to believe looking at her playing tonight, but yeah. uh, a lot of people say an even better softball player Goodness. Uh, than a basketball player, but she's all in my double-A in softball, and had one of the best batting averages in the league, if not the best, last okay. year, and you get a replay right there, as you can see her, nice passing, little give-and-go late there, transition game's been fantastic uh, for Hope, and it looks like it, it really, it's been McAfee and Anderson on the uh, receiving end of a lot of those transition buckets, and yep. I think that's just a testament to what kind of hustle these, these players show and what they've shown for the four years here at Hope. Absolutely. We talked about just the consistent production, too, and I love what you mentioned about Anderson's softball days. She brings it on the diamond, too. I mean, all, MIA, all MIAA performer, softball team, too, two-sport athlete, do that in college, any level. You're impressing me with that, so... Great contributions today from both seniors as we head into the final six minutes of this one. 
Hope with the 44 point advantage. Shea looking to make something work and one, give it to her. She'll head to the line to try to complete three point play. St. Mary's leading scorer on the season. Yeah, certainly not quitting, working hard inside. She's, uh, she's been trying to get some good buckets like that all day, just been having a tough time getting them to go sometimes. She could get uh, finished up the old-fashioned three-point play there with the free throw. Uh, you know, Napke's kind of picked it up a little bit for her, but uh, it's been tough sledding for everybody for St. Mary's, right. which is understandable. I do like, though, on that and one play, Coach Henley for St. Mary's with a pump, fist pump. She likes it. She likes to see the aggression remain from her squad. Trying to chip away, but again, just trying to take some positive momentum into their next game. And uh, kind of getting excited here, just just remembering, you know, Coach Morehouse is about to pick up his 500th win. Yes. Not a whole lot of basketball coaches at the D3 level can say that they're uh, going to have the opportunity to get 500 wins. And you said, how many straight 21 seasons? 18 or something? 18. S something just stupid. Just like stupid, just, silly. Just unbelievable. <laughs> Um, and that's that's what you have to do in order to get 500 wins. I mean, Coach Morehouse is not an, what do you consider an old coach no. either. I mean, he's uh, certainly got a lot more time where he's got the ability to coach. And I don't want to say he's going to win a thousand games, but uh, I mean, you kind of do at, though. If you kept it up at this pace, he definitely <laughs> has 18 more years of coaching in him. And sure. not too many people get uh, get a thousand wins. I mean, think of you know like Pat Summit. <laughs> yeah. um, you got to have longevity. And he talked. <laughs> I, I mean. It's a good point, though. I mean, I saw his interview after their last game, which was, you know, a strong win against Alma, 17-point win on February 3rd, and the video interview after that. He just talked about the consistency of the program. He needed from, not he he credited his assistant coaches, his coaching staff. He didn't. He's a humble guy. He won't say, yeah, this is all on me. It's 500. From, no, it's his players who he recruits. It's his assistant coaches who game plan with him. The athletic trainers, the man, whoever it is, as we see Buchanan extend her game to the three-point line, she can three. But again, Morehouse just talking about consistency. That was a key word in what he was saying, and that's what this program has shown since '96 when he jumped on board. And wow, I mean, year in year out, Blaine, we're seeing them in the national polls. We're seeing 20 plus wins. We see a great move by Randall, but she's blocked inside by Ronan. Going to go over to the Bells here. Looked like somebody stepped on the line uh, while in contact with the ball. Under five left to play now. Right. And uh, just a formality trying to finish it out. And how about that? Senior day celebration, celebrating your coach's 500th win. What right. a great day here. And we've still got another one to come up after this with the men's <laughs> game. It's uh, one of the biggest games in all of Division Three basketball this year. I can promise you that. Absolutely. There will be no better atmosphere at a D3 basketball game this year uh, up until this point. Just Tied up there inside. But, yeah, I mean... And we talked about Alma Hope coming up the men's game at 7.30. Alma beat them, beat Hope at Alma's place. So it's it's revenge. Hopefully, I mean, Hope hoping for revenge tonight after an 11-point loss earlier in the season. Their only loss in MIAA play is to the Scots. So, I mean, it's just going to be button heads, guys getting hyped for this one tonight. Great move by Gibson inside. Great to see her get on the board. Now it's just uh, Dornhoff, the only player on the team who hasn't scored. I remember she had very limited minutes, obviously, just played briefly uh, while the starting lineup was in there. Oh, rejection from Hedrick. Great play. Hedrick looked, in, <laughs> looked up <laughs> through Buchanan there, but you mentioned phenomenal defense there by Hedrick on the other end. You know, I thought Hope would be slowing down a little bit and just kind of coast to a win, but here with four minutes left, they still might get to 100 points. Well, You would expect them to the at this rate. <laughs> the way to the century mark for sure. Good look by Randall. She's off left. Another offensive board. The O board's just piling up for Hope, but it's going to go St. Mary's way here. Here's a stat that might surprise you. Sure, hit us. St. Mary's right now with more offensive rebounds than Hope. Wow. <laughs> it, it does not feel that way. It doesn't. Um, and Hope only out rebounded St. Mary's by six boards. I almost want to take back my comment on the O boards. But you got to remember, it's tough to get offensive rebounds when you're not missing a lot of shots. Sure. That's the other thing. St. Mary's, on the other hand, we'll just say has had plenty of opportunity for <laughs> offensive rebounds. Yeah, there's another one as we're mentioning it. Ronan cleans up the mess. She gets two more as St. Mary's hits 50 on the scoreboard. A 
Shout out to St. Mary's. We've seen a lot of teams not score 50 points against this Dutch team. So right. At least they can say they've done that. Yeah, 51.6 points per game allowed coming into today's game for Hope. So, it, you know, you're, it's looking like St. Mary's for sure going to eclipse that 51 mark. So, again, so, a, a tidbit you can take away if you're St. Mary's looking for something positive out of this game. Good block by Nat Kanapke. It sticks with hope. I said at first, it looked like they might get to 100, but now I'm not so sure if they can't get a bucket here. All right. Got to hit one here, you think. Off the side of the backboard, Randall, but Dornhoff tried to clean that one up, but shot clock and off the mark. Shea, quick turnaround, good. Oh, boy, they could have used a little bit more of that. Nice turnaround. Right. Quick, quick release. release. Three yeah. players in double digits for the Bows now, and uh, one with nine in Ronan, so sure. they're scoring the basketball okay. They just, like others, haven't been able to stop Hope from scoring. Exactly. They get, uh, and we mentioned that too, the scoring for the Bells. Yeah, three of them give you, two of them give you double digits, and you got another one right there as we see a step back off the mark by Schwark. The scoring has slowed, and uh, the Bells with a chance to get it back within 40. Good look inside. Oh, wow. Where's the defense? Hope a little lost there, but it's Shea to Knapp key. Don't Good think, offense there. Don't think Coach Morehouse was too annoyed by that uh, defensive breakdown, yeah. considering uh, the overall resume of today's game. <laughs> Hope looking to extend this lead. Ooh. Not not a high arcing three off the mark. Not a bad looking lob, I was just going to say. <laughs> Toss it up and thought it would drop straight down. That's one of those that might not even. I hardly hit the net, but just dropped straight down to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Did catch some rim as we had St. Mary's way. Kohler just trying to create, trying to create, and she does once again. My goodness, she just she can keep the dribble blade. She can create with passing. She can find the paint. I like her game. I like number 12's game, what I've seen t today from Kohler. That's going to be a walk yeah. on Gibson. Try getting a little too fancy. <laughs> Frustrated Morehouse tries to calm her down there. Yeah, I think she was I think somewhat jokingly frustrated <laughs> there. With the, It's hard to be mad in this point of the game, but just to everybody out that's out there right now, this is just an opportunity to continue to try and work on your game is what this is. Yep. Oh, Shea runs in to Maloney as turnover going Hope's way. Hedrick. Good look up ahead, and that's complete by Dornoff. Nice finish, and uh, with that, everybody uh, on this Hope College roster has scored today. Top to bottom. Unbelievable. <laughs> 40 seconds to play in this one, 41 to be exact, as Macius will head to the line for two for St. Mary's. 95, 56, 41.9 seconds to play in this ball game. Gibson is sitting on the floor here tying her shoe. Refs will wait for her. She's up now. I mean, <laughs> she's up here to uh, shoot two, so I suppose could have let her have one, but just want to make sure. Oh, boy. Whoops. Way off the mark by... Oh. You know what, Macious. at least with Macius a smile on the face there, not too upset, just said, whoops, that one sometimes gets away from you every once in a while. Sure. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Macius, uh, not a bad basketball player at all. Macius off on two. Hope, 39 seconds to play. They'll get one more possession, it seems to be here, 20. Seconds on the shot clock. Randall off the knee, looks like from our point of view here. So 30 seconds, shot clock's turned off. St. Mary's, oh, shot clock almost Same, identical. 0.4 seconds <laughs> right. above, so with the shot clock violation, I suppose that would mean we'd have 0.4 seconds left to play. Good move inside by Macius. Connects on to 95-58. Looks like Hope will just walk this one out. But again, I like 
Still aggressive D there by Maloney up top. Four seconds to play. Congratulations to Coach Brian Morehouse. So we see a lot of 500 signs go up all around the arena here. This is cool. You can see it on the broadcast here all around. I'm sure we can get that for you. Look at everybody standing up right now with the 500 signs. <laughs> and uh, on senior day, it's the coach that's mobbed, which is pretty right. special to see a celebration it is for, for so many different reasons. Obviously, fantastic to see the seniors scoring some points tonight. Autumn Anderson leads all scorers with 19, and Maura McAfee with 16. So great job uh, getting the seniors the basketball. And every time it was a breakout opportunity, it seemed like they were scoring. My goodness, yeah, it was cool to see the team close in on Brian Morehouse. 500 victories, hope improves to 21-0. and 0. Still no blemish in the loss column. 2015-16 for the Flying Dutch. St. Mary's falls to 1-21 on the season. Still just one victory in MIAA play. Hope remains undefeated all across the board. Overall, home, away, MIAA looking real good. And again, Blaine, we saw it. The bench contrib contributed top to bottom. I don't know what minutes per are looking like. I think it can't be much more over 20 for any player. And then, yeah, talk about the seniors too again as we see McAfee up close to us get a hug. Yeah. And uh, looks like they've got some uh, special t-shirts down there that the team's wow. got on. Some uh, like Coach Morehouse t-shirts over there and you, like you said you see everybody with the signs of the crowd and uh, we're about to hear from President Knapp and one of our co-athletic directors uh, Melinda Larson as well. Let's see what they have to say. The 500th career victory for Flying Dutch head coach Brian Morehouse. Now, as if that is not impressive enough, it might be worth noting that in 20 years, Coach Morehouse's overall record is 500 wins against only 76 losses. <laughs> Coach Morehouse has, to his credit, a national championship, 12 NCAA our 14 NCAA conference appearances, our uh, national tournament appearances, and 12 MIAA conference championships. Quite a record. And Brian, I just want to say on behalf of all of us that while we are grateful for your winning record, we're even more grateful for your influence, for your leadership, and for the way that you have shaped the character of hundreds of Hope College women. Thank you so much on behalf of Hope College. Coach Morehouse from Hope College Athletics, congratulations on your 500th win and best wishes for 500 more here at Hope College. <laughs> Um, it's a, uh, it's a fairy tale day, um, you know, who would, who would ever have thought that Alumni Day, our national championship celebration, um, my 500th win would, uh, all come on the same day. Um, we make a point of it in our basketball program to talk about, um, the foundations that have come before us, uh, in year number one. Uh, the coaches that have come before me and the importance that uh, they have played in making uh, women's basketball uh, such a strong tradition and most importantly the players that have come uh, before our players and the impact that they've had on these young women uh, having an opportunity to play this great, great game and uh, influence other people around them. Um, I've been so fortunate to have uh, the greatest assistant coaches, um, great players, and uh, most importantly, a uh, wife that will support me and allow me to do the things uh, that I need to do to win basketball games and, and help shape young lives. And the great thing for me is uh, now it is uh, being paid back in the form of um, players influencing my daughters for 15 and 
uh, almost 14 years and watching them grow up uh, in the shape of uh, what these ladies set as an example. There's no better place than hope. There's no better place that I'd rather do this. And there's no better fans in the world than the people that we get to do this in front of every day uh, in every game. We thank you very much, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for the head coach of your Hope College Flying Dutch, Mr. Brian Morehouse. Um, but certainly a great matchup coming up. <laughs> right. Fans More to come. We got JV men's basketball coming up. Hope Alma followed by prime time, 730. Going to be nuts here in DeVos Fieldhouse. Number 12, Alma at number 7, Hope. Going to be terrific electric atmosphere. 95-58 final here. Hope over St. Mary's. Senior day, McAfee, Anderson, show up and contribute huge to this win. Coach Mo, Brian Morehouse, 500 career victories. And Blaine, we see it, no one over 20 minutes for Hope. Again, balanced minutes, scoring, you know, fall toward Autumn Anderson with 19 to lead the Dutch, 16 for McAfee, 11 for Gaddy, also hit double figures. Leading the way for the Bells, 17 for Knapke, 13 for Kohler. 11 for Shea, so three and double figures for St. Mary's, who's still looking for it. Victory number two on the season. Hope improves to 21 and 0, 13 and 0 in MIAA play. Any wrapping thoughts from you, Blaine? Uh, you know, obviously fantastic. Feels good to be kind of sitting here to witness history. Yes. 500 wins and a thousand wins for a coach seems unbelievable. But when you look at the numbers, if the tre if the trend continues. Obviously reachable for Coach Morehouse, who has plenty of years left to coach. Um, we shall see what he gets to. Here. We don't. We don't. He's excited out there on the floor, <laughs> still talking to people. Uh, uh, we do not have the JV game here on the broadcast for you guys, but uh, James Correct. will be back uh, for uh, the varsity game, which starts at 7:30. So yes. make sure you tune in and listen to this guy. Like I said, maybe I'll stop by at halftime for right my on. analysis. And uh, you know, since I'm just stepping in as an anal as as you know a fan coming in for analysis. Not actually sitting on the broadcast. Maybe yeah. I can be a little uh, more unbiased than usual, so watch out for that. We'll see what my opinion is as a Hope fan. Blaine will try to get around. us some Duke crew analysis at halftime of the 7.30 game. Hope Alma would love to have you back for that one. Going to be a sweet game. Two nationally ranked teams. Blaine, it's a pleasure to call first time hey, with you. Great to call the game with you. It's been fun to mix things up a little bit. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us again here at DeVos Fieldhouse. Final today, Hope 95, St. Mary's 58, Coach Morehouse 500 wins, McAfee Anderson, big contributions on Senior Day. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your Saturday. <laughs>